Hello, I'd like to discuss and demonstrate Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Here we have a statement of Faraday's law. Electromagnetic induction, known as Faraday's law, is that a changing magnetic field or a changing magnetic flux will create an electric field. Faraday first discovered this uh, phenomenon in the year 1831. He was overworking at the Royal Society in London, England, and he was uh, working with some coils of wire, uh, and uh, this is the uh, discovery that he came up with. I'm now going to demonstrate that. He had a coil of wire on which he wrapped a secondary coil, which I'll do here in just a minute, so that he had a primary coil, which would be like this yellow coil here, and he had a switch to connect it to a battery, then he had a secondary coil connected up to a galvanometer. So let me go ahead and wire this up, put the secondary coil on it, then we'll connect it up and we'll do the experiment and see what happens. So, so now I'm, I'm prepared to uh, wind onto this uh, primary coil, a secondary coil, which is electrically independent from it. I have uh, previously wound 200 uh, turns on the primary coil. That's uh, with this lead and this lead being the ends of the uh, primary coil. And now the secondary coil is going to have this as one end, and when we cut that off, we'll get to the other end here. I'm going to wrap 200 uh, turns onto the secondary coil. So I'll wrap those turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 193, 94, 95, 96, 97, 198, 199, and 200 turns. OK, we'll tie it off here at this point. Then uh, cut the end and clean the uh, varnish off of here. Of course, Faraday didn't have nice wire like this. He had to take uh, copper wire and wind it with string to keep the various parts of the wire from shorting into one another. But we have an insulated wire, so the various parts of the coil are electrically isolated from one another. But we need to clean the varnish off the end of this to get a good uh, connection. So now we have the coil. Uh, in this fashion, primary coil we're going to connect up to the battery, secondary coil we're going to connect up to the galvanometer. Uh, the primary coil was wound on here first, it has 200 turns, the secondary coil was wound over the top of the primary, it also has 200 turns. Uh, now I'd like to hook up the circuit. Uh, we're going to connect the primary coil uh, through the switch to the battery, uh, one side and the other side so that the, uh, the primary coil, which was the first coil wound on here, 200 turns, will be connected when I throw the switch to the battery. The secondary coil is the coil that's laid over the top of the primary coil in this case, and that'll be connected uh, to the galvanometer, which is a current detecting device. Now the battery is going to pump electrons through the circuit, and when I throw the switch, It'll take just a fraction of a second for that current to build up to its maximum value. It's that change in current that will cause a changing magnetic field that induces the electric field in the secondary circuit, which causes a current to flow through the uh, galvanometer. Let's see what happens when I throw the switch. So when I throw the switch, I increase the current in the primary circuit. That causes a change in the magnetic field which induces an electric field which drives current through the secondary part of the circuit. Similarly, when I open the switch, we will see another change in magnetic field. The magnetic field will drop to whatever value it now has to zero. That's a change in the magnetic field, and that causes a change in the electric field in the other direction, which causes the current to reverse its direction in a galvanometer. So when there's no change in the magnetic field, there's no induced electric field in the secondary coil, and therefore there's no current in the secondary coil. There's no change when the switch stays open or when the switch remains closed. No change. No change. There's no effect. But when there's a change, either opening the switch or closing the switch, we get a change. And to summarize, a changing magnetic field or a changing magnetic flux will create an electric field.